Oh, Konami. Konami used to be such a different company. But hello everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Turtles in Time. We're actually playing the Super Nintendo version of Turtles in Time. Uh, this one is called uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, because it is the fourth game to be available on the Nintendo Entertainment Systems. This one being the follow-up to the Manhattan Project. So we'll just let the attract mode go for a little bit while we talk about the game. The reason we're playing the Super Nintendo version is because it has some functionality and some extras over the arcade version that I think are more worthwhile to see. Now, as just looking at this game, you can tell that it's an action game. It was made by Capcom, and I think it was made in 92, although I don't remember quite exact what hand. This is a Konami game, but no, I don't know if offhand it has the Konami code in it anywhere. Some of the extra functionality that the Super Nintendo version has is this time trial mode up here, as well as a versus mode. But right now we're going to go into options. I've been playing it on hard mode because you get uh, additional content at the end of the game. But I think it's just something that Splinter tells you. I think Splinter says something along the lines of, you've completed your training. So we're actually going to play on normal mode. And I like to change the control type, so that way the special attack is a single button instead of two of them. We're also going to set ourselves to seven lives, because I'm going to take every advantage that I can get. I'm also turning off dash, or rather I'm setting dash to manual, because as you see in the game, several attacks you can perform from either walking or dashing and I think it's easier when you can dash when you want to instead of waiting for the game to automatically make you dash and I'm going to turn back attacks off because again I find that having back attacks on makes it more difficult to perform some of the things you want to do. Our other thing here is color mode where we can switch back and forth between the animated version of the Ninja Turtles or the comic ver book version of the Ninja Turtles. And some of our uh, viewers in the stream are already yelling at us, use comic colors, use comic colors. And you know what? I, I was considering just using the animation uh, colors so we could keep consistency across the Ninja Turtle games. But since everyone says go with the comic colors, all right, we're going to go with the comic colors. Unfortunately, one of the things that the Super Nintendo version misses out on over the arcade version is the Pizza Power song that plays in the beginning. In fact, there's even a different opening that the Nintendo, uh, Super Nintendo version has. And there you go, that's Leo's uh, comic book colors that we're looking at right now. But that's enough. We're going to actually jump into the game now. Now, you all know that I'm a Donnie man, but I think what we're going to do is go from the turtles left to right, uh, see if I can even uh, go through all four of the turtles as we play through the game. And there is Miss O'Neil reporting live. And then Krang steals the Statue of Liberty, that jerk. Oh, I should be, I should be narrating this, shouldn't I? Well, Leo's dialogue here is a little different. And that, that is the absolute uh, reason that I decided to play the Super Nintendo version over the arcade version. Big Apple, 3 a.m. So, we're playing the game. We move around like normal, and we jump, and we attack. Now we have our basic combo attacks. We have the different types of jumping attacks. I have a little trouble pulling them back, so bear with me. And we also run, and when we run, we can either do these little flips, or we can do these charges. Uh, and that is probably one of the more important attacks 
over the course of the game. Is that slam. And throwing them at the screen. Now, the reason we want to do the slam is because we get extra points for slamming them. And it will also take out other foot soldiers. But right now, I seem to be throwing them mostly towards the screen. There we go. In fact, we're going to want to throw them at the screen at certain points in the game. Because that's how you actually damage some of the enemies. That gold me. noticed, by Leo's name, there is a counter. That counter reads 56 right now. That's our score. When we get that score up to 200, we will get an extra life. And there's Krang's giant robot body giving us trouble. Like the other Ninja Turtle games that we play, you see that we have different colored foot soldiers here that fight different ways. Those blue ones came in with weapons. These white ones have weapons too. Uh oh. Okay, it's boss fight time. Terminate the turtles! And this is Baxter Stockman. Except he's in fly form. He's attacking us with his uh, gun here, which right now is just firing bolts at us. Bullets at us, but it's not going to be that way for the entire fight. I just keep walking right into it. I'll try to get up oh, now. We go now. It's got this beam that's in the shape of his hand. He dies with an explosion, and falls off the building. Alright, now we're on stage two, and we get a little silhouette of who the boss for this stage might be. Yeah, someone in the uh, stream mentioned that they thought that that was some sort of, like, sticky galop that uh, Baxter was firing. And you know what? That may be more accurate. I was calling it a beam, but it might have been uh, something else. It would make sense given his uh, his character. Like some sort of flypaper glue. get our extra life soon enough. If I don't get killed. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Just like the other games, we get little goofy things like that, say we pull and hold or hurt ourselves. Another reason I wanted to play the Super Nintendo version. The Super Nintendo version has the Roadkill Rodmans. Shell Shock is right. And I have pizza right here waiting for me. Ooh, they got me twice.
I don't need that one up. I love this little slamming mechanic. Do it more regularly. Oh, the jerks again. If I can slam this foot soldier, I might be able to get them both. No, Leo. Get the robot. Ah, and there's a special pizza box. Instead of healing us, it lets us do the super attack, where we just spin around, knocking everyone away. And there's a regular pizza. Alright, is that all of them? Yep. It's boss fight time. I'm gonna mangle you green slime balls. That's Metalhead. He's a robot turtle. And I always confuse Metalhead with Chrome Dome. Chrome Dome is actually this badass looking uh, robot ninja that was supposed to be invincible because he was made out of some sort of super tough material except for a little part on his back. I don't remember much about Metalhead to be honest with you. Which is probably why I keep confusing him with Chrome Dome. But be careful fighting this guy because if you see that uppercut he does, he'll knock you right out of the air. goes. Sewer surface. Scene 3. And there's another little clue at what enemy we're going to be fighting down here. But this scene uh, is expanded from the arcade version. Normally it was just a bonus stage, where you can rack up extra points, taking out foot soldiers and grabbing pizzas. But in the Super Nintendo version of the game, you actually get a boss fight down here. Yeah, we want to hit as many of these foot soldiers as we can to rack up our score. Ooh, so far so good. Alright, I'm gonna hit one of these mines on purpose. As you can see, they do that little my toe thing. Which used to be a great source of amusement for me and my buddies back when we used to play it. Alright, now the xenomorphs are attacking. These are the pizza monsters. They appeared in the, uh, the animated series. And they were made by these, these uh... These kind of like meatballs that were on the turtle's pizza, and when they cooked them in the microwave, these horrible monsters appear. Alright, so we got 26 points for this stage. And now, it's time for the boss fight. And this boss fight only appears in this version of the game. And it's the Rat King. First the sewers, then the world! And the game is being very nice letting us know where to attack him. And for the most part, if we can stay in the middle of him, those missiles will uh, miss us. But he does have this little beam of energy that will hit us. You see now he backs off and drops some uh, mines, so we're going to avoid those. You can attack him at this point, but it leaves you open to getting hit by the mines. But, we got him. So at this point, we get a special stage that, once again, is only in the Super Nintendo version. 
we're going to attack the Technodrome. In the arcade version, we would have jumped ahead. Uh, is that another turtle-looking monster? I wonder who that is. Okay, and our health has been restored. Uh, more of those robots. We get Mausers. I think this is the first we've seen of them so far. Oh, poor Leo. See how useful that slam attack is? We are clearing rooms when we do it. That is another pizza. Try to save that for a minute. Uh, now these these foot soldiers with the confars are annoying. They block your attacks. It is possible to hit them with a charge and stun them. And then you can throw them or slam them. But what we're gonna do is just knock them away with our special attack. I get talking about special attacks, I haven't been really using Leo special attack, have I? I'll try to remind myself to use it at some point. Maybe when we're fighting the boss. Well, what do you know? Here's the boss. Toga! Reza! Master say have fun! Fun! And Toga and Razor are from the actual, the uh, live-action Ninja Turtles cartoon. Not cartoon. <laughs> live-action Ninja Turtles movie. Seek the views. And I actually think uh, Toka looks freaking awesome. Razor, I always thought, was kind of goofy looking. Now, they appear in the arcade version, but our boss is at a different stage. There we go, there's Leo's special attack. That almost put down Razor. And if you notice, Razor uh, breathes fire and burns us. And we've knocked him back to wolf form. Toka is breathing uh, ice. And if he hits us with it, we get froze. Turns back into well, it's supposed to be a snapping turtle. But kind of a goofy-looking little turtle right there. And then let's grab that pizza and heal. And now it's time for an elevator stage. This is a good chance for us just to build up points. Oh, Leo, I hope it's that easy to throw the foot soldiers with you when the time comes. But well, we're about to get our extra life. There we go. You know, man, for, uh, for this being normal mode, I'm sure getting beat up a lot. There we go.
Okay, here comes a very special boss fight. Tonight I dine on turtle soup. We're gonna fight the Shredder, who's in that battle tank. And what we gotta do is throw foot soldiers at him. It's the only way to damage him. Shredder is going to attack by shooting us with a gun and trying to grab us with those uh, claws. This is another reason, this fight right here is another reason I think it's more worthwhile to play the Super Nintendo version of this game. Like the old me. over. And Shredder escapes into Dimension X. My patience is wearing thin. I'm banishing you to a time warp, from which you will never return. Alright, now is where the game uh, gets its name from. Turtles in Time. And that little silhouette does not appear in the arcade version of the game. You fight a very different boss here. But we'll, we'll see who the boss is when we get to him. Okay, we are in the Dinosaur Age with the Turtles. Those horrible little Pteranodons are dropping rocks on us. Still foot soldiers. No cave foot soldiers, unfortunately. Which I think is, you know, something that the game missed out on. Soldiers who look like they come from the super uh, <laughs> who look like they came from the movie and some rock warriors as well. These rock warriors look like they're trag. Trag. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. Oh, the way. You can throw these guys. You can't slam them like you can the foot soldiers. Dinosaurs do the work for us. Yeah, trampled. Look at that. Shredder, that evil maniac, is building a monument to himself over there. And 
Okay, some more rock soldiers to take care of. I really don't like that overhand swing that Leo does there. Just leaves him too vulnerable, and the attack comes up too short. Okay, it's boss fight time, and I am positioning myself here for a reason. It's Slash. Your history, slime balls. Slash, we can only hurt from behind. So I want to try to get him either when he jumps at us or when he lands. It's actually possible to get him from behind, but I have a hard time doing it. This is usually the stage where I end up losing life, where I really want to continue rather. So we'll see what happens fighting with Slash. See, he even got a uh, block on special attack. Dancing attack. Alright. Leo is done. And now we get our continue screen, which is actually pulled from the Ninja Turtle spell. Now, this time I'm going to go down the list and we're going to play Mikey. But what I'm going to do is pick up from where we were fighting Slash. So I'll see you guys all in a minute. Alright, we're back fighting with Slash. Now, Slash was uh, Bebop and Rocksteady's pet turtle that they mutated because they figured, hey, what better than having their own uh, mutant ninja turtle? And Slash, well, Slash was insane. But he was tough as nails. And the turtles usually were able to take him out because he had a. Kind of like a, uh, an obsession with his uh, plastic pine, uh, not pine tree, his plastic palm tree. I think the first time they dealt with him, they ended up shooting him into outer space. And he was happy because he was just in outer space in a garbage uh, rocket that had giant palm trees in it. But we beat him. Mikey did a whole lot better than Leo. Okay, so, from the Age of Dinosaurs, we go to... The Age of Pirates. And this stage does appear in the arcade version, and the bosses are Toka and Reza. But in this version, we get a, uh... We get a special duo waiting for us. Right into that plank. No, plank, pirate ship. Oh, almost got me. Careful of being broadsided by that other ship. Oh, flying. Special pizza for good use. 
still got whacked. Kinda digging the music here though. sprung right into that. Oh, and you and your death yo-yos. Get off me. Alright, let's get that pizza. Alright, we got our one up, and we're almost ready for the bosses. First, we gotta take out these rock warriors that have guns. Oh, jeez. Made short work of me. And there we go. You're walking the plank, Shell Brains. Got Bebop and Rock City, they're playing out their pirate fantasy. And they're going to tag in and out. And occasionally they'll even sort of fight together. Like that, I think we only attack whoever is active. Look at him just kicking us away with his legs. Couldn't get along, so I couldn't win. Okay, so away from the pirate ship and on to a steam train. Worry my shell at wounded knee. Ooh, and who is that? Who is that juking and jiving there? So the turtles are playing out their spaghetti western fantasy. So this stage has pretty nice music too. Soldier is playing his best, best Clint Eastwood. Ah, oh, poor Mikey.
Oh, and these guys have girders. I don't know if that makes them more or less dangerous. Alright, it's boss fight time and there's let Oh goody, fresh pearls for lunch. Now, Leatherhead, I really like the whole heck of a lot of. And that's probably because uh, good old Jim Cummins voiced him and brought so much character into this, this little critter. I still remember that I would I still remember that I would go around saying the things that Leatherhead did. Although I had completely forgotten that Leatherhead was the one saying it. One of uh, Leatherhead's uh, little things was I guarantee. Which I would say a lot. Completely having forgotten that it was him who said it. Now let's see if we can beat him. And there he is throwing a lot not lobsters at us, four fish at us. He actually walked around with a, uh, a pair of crawfish in the TV show that he threatened people with. Um, poor Mikey. Well, I guess what's gonna happen is I'm gonna pick Donnie, and since I'm used to using Donnie, maybe we'll do a little bit better. I'll be with you guys as soon as we get back to Leatherhead. Alright, back to Leatherhead. And what a difference a turtle makes. I was doing a whole lot better with Donnie this time around. Still getting beaten up though. Careful when he drops the all fours and does that little charge. That's usually what gets me. Well, that was what was getting me when I was playing with Mike. Size bit of gumbo. Good riddance. Alright, the turtles are all done in cowboy and Indian times. Now we'll, where will they head? They're going off into the future. The far off year of 2020. Christ, that's only five years away at this point. Alright, this is another stage that was not in the arcade game. It's another chance for us to earn a whole bunch of points. Get to enjoy some of that Super Nintendo mode set. Well, now is 
Mazers. Electrified Mazers. Is anyone else uh, feeling um, F0? So I'm kind of feeling like F0. Distance and coming in. Face the wrath of Subakrang! Well, you may be super. Or mutants. We're not just gonna sit here and let you beat on us. Not quite as um, intimidating looking as I would say he looked in the arcade version of the game. But it's still a great looking sprite. We've almost got him beat. Let's see if I can beat him without losing a life. See about that. Okay, we're done with the future. And now in space. Starbase, where no turtle has gone before. All right, twenty one hundred. And that's a kind of weird looking silhouette. I wonder what the heck that is. I'm gonna try to be careful of those. Oh, I remember you little guys. You were annoying. That's right, down in the There's a one up before I get knocked out. Yeah, I need to do more of that. More of the slamming of the enemies. The idea is just to stun them, and then you either press forward while attacking to toss them at the screen, or just press attack while not moving to slam them. And the throws. Now let's grab our pizza and go. So much for that. There we 
but we want the Rock Warriors to get hit by that boulder. Not us. Oversized Green Shoes Wrecking Ball. Oh, these jerks have grenades. means boss fight time. You shell heads are dead! And it's Krang floating around in his little flying saucer. Shredder's laughing at us in the back. Be careful of his bubbles. Scrubbing Krang bubbles. Some hard slow down there. You're not getting away yet, Krang. We're almost done with you. We're racking up points to gain a lot of life. But he's done. 
That pulls our way home. Let's go. Okay, so we're going back. Back from the future. Technodrome. And we're in modern day time. Well, modern day for what turtles were. And we're ready to fight the boss of the game. And there he is. There is Shredder. And he's powering up and becoming the Super Shredder. <laughs> Turtle Soup, my favorite. Now, Super Shredder, I love the Super Shredder, and I honestly don't know why. I mean, he's probably an even, you know, less interesting design-wise than regular Shredder, but for some reason I just love the way he looks. Now, as you can see, he's mostly just teleporting around a stage, zapping us with energy. And how tough he is is going to depend on how well you get to sort of recognize his patterns. See, when he's turned red like that, he's going to blast the ground with fire. So it's good to jump in at him at that point. Let's see if I can get him to do another color. When he's blue, he's going to shoot ice up into the air. So jumping at him is not so good. At that point, it's probably better just to walk towards him. And eventually, you might see him turn green. When he turns green, that's when he's going to hit you. There you go. That green beam is a one-hit kill, so don't get hit by it. But just like the red blast, if you jump at the right time, you avoid the attack and you'll be able to get hits in on him. Oh, that was lucky. He was blue, so he would have knocked us out of the air. You know what, since we've almost got him beat, maybe I'll let him hit me with a green blast, just so you guys can see what it does. There you go. The D mutates us and we turn back into a regular turtle. But remember, that's a one-hit kill, so be careful. Down you go, Shredder. Alright, Splinter, what have you got to say? Very impressive for such young students. But the final test in your training lies ahead. Defeat the hard mode, and you will be true ninjas. So there you go, it. Shredder's laughing at us. Alright, there we go. We beat it on normal in about just about half an hour. A little longer considering, you know, I had to continue a few times. But there you go, that was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you uh, liked what you saw and you want to give it a shot, well, your best bet is to go out and try to get a copy of it for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. You can, of course, go out and get yourself a arcade machine and play the arcade version. And the arcade version of the game is available as a bonus on certain uh, versions of the game. I think uh, Battle Nexus was the Ninja Turtle game where Turtles in Time is a bonus that you can unlock. A remake was available on Xbox Live and PlayStation Network called Reshell, which more or less plays like the arcade version, has the same stages and whatnot, but was completely rehauled graphically with new audio and sound and everything. 
Uh, again, I prefer the Super Nintendo version, but hey, if you can get your hands on it, you might like that too. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next game.